Hi everyone, Paul Akers, host of The American Innovator. You know, the innovative spirit is alive and well, and everywhere I travel around the world, I bring back ideas and creativity to share with my audience to continuously improve and change the way we live. Welcome to The American Innovator. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to The American Innovator. I think you're gonna love this week. We're gonna go on a balloon ride over the Mossamar, but before we get in the balloon, we gotta first blow the balloon up. So let's talk to Sanjay, our pilot. What do you do to become a balloon pilot? Uh, you just go to the doctor, and you get half your brain taken out, and then you get a pilot's license. <laughs> So we finished a little bit of paperwork with Sanjay, signing our life away, and the balloon's being blown up now. So they lay the balloon out, they take huge fans, they blow air inside of it, they connect all the cables, the ropes, they inspect everything, make sure it's okay. Sanjay invites me to actually go inside the balloon and film, which was just spectacular. And so the balloon starts to rise, and as the balloon starts to come up a little bit, then they start to put hot air into the balloon. You're gonna see that right now, the basket, is a safari basket built very, very heavy duty so it can hit the trees and everything. And so now it's flame on time and we're gonna put some hot air into the balloon and the balloon will start to rise. He's measuring the temperature the whole time. The balloon comes up and he invites me to actually come in the basket when he's putting the hot air into it. It's just really incredible. So what's happening right now is all of his team are holding onto the basket to make sure it doesn't float away and then they're actually using a separate propane bottle that's outside of the basket to initiate the original filling of the balloon because he doesn't want to use the fuel that he has on the basket. You can see it connected there. There's a small cable on the ground. I just get some great footage with the eye pole, of course, of what this is like. Now, it's very early in the morning. It's a little cold. Uh, we're in Africa, in Kenya specifically, and we're going to go over the Masa Mara or the Mara River. So we wave goodbye and we start to take off. And this is really, it's just again an awesome experience, once in a lifetime. So we're just leaving the balloon staging area right here. And in front of us are a lot of trees. And I'm telling you, if I was a betting man, I'd say there's no way we're gonna clear these trees. But Sanjay pulls it off, barely, we brushed the top of them, but he knew exactly what he was doing. So, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Look at how slow we're moving up. And we've got to somehow clear these trees. I don't think it's going to happen. But we hit the top of them. That's part of the excitement. You're just brushing the tops of the trees. And notice how big the basket is. I think we got like 16 or 17 people in there. Sanjay, they only took a quarter of the brain out. <laughs> He is, he's so much fun. Sanjay's just got a great sense of humor. A very brilliant guy, an engineer in robotics. <laughs> now, how often do you get to do something like this? And of course, I gotta hang out over the basket, and get all kinds of cool footage just to give that perspective of what it's like just to float across the plains of Africa. I've got two cameras going. I'm using my Sony, and I'm also using the Aztec camera. Look at this perspective. Isn't that cool? Four burners. So he has little controls there. He just reaches up with his hands and pulls on levers depending upon what burner he wants to use to fill the balloon. You can see the trails down there. You can see something amazing. Look at this vulture just sitting in the tree. It doesn't even fly away. And we literally go within about 10 feet of it. can't beat this. For getting and we hit in, some eh? trees as we're going by them, too. The Mara River. This is where we've seen all the drama unfold in the last few days. Now, the interesting thing is when we first went to Africa, we never saw really hippos to speak of, just their heads peeking out. In this trip, we saw hippos everywhere, in the balloon, on the ground, in the river. So there's a lot of Japanese tourists in the basket as well, and they're hysterical. We have a great time with them. We exchange names at the end of the trip, and I think this guy in the front of me is like the president of Mitsubishi or something very funny thing happens to him. You'll see it at the end of the video. And then I stick the eye pole out 
the basket as we're skimming along the plains, right where the animals are, just to give a perspective on what it's like. And we wave to another safari vehicle going down the road. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> How are you? And some water bucks. And we're very close to the ground right here. A warthog hole. Sanjay says, pay attention, maybe one will run out right when we go by, but we missed that. But then here's the sun coming up. Is this beautiful? And also they provide habitat for animals to give birth, protection from winds and... So Sanjay's telling us about the Hippo Highways. These are all the small tributaries that feed into the Mara River, and those are how the animals, you can see them right here, negotiate out into the plains to get food and then come back to the river. They provide a safe habitat as well as a place for them to eat and live. And this is it right here. You can see them. These little round uh, marks that you see? Yeah, Some zebras. UFOs. See yeah. little round marks there? He's always kidding around. Another warthog. A male ostrich. The plains are so beautiful. We've got the eye pole out and down and over the Mara River again. We're just kind of floating across the Mara River and then across the plains and then back onto the Mara River. I think an Elan. Imagine what they're thinking. The topi. Look at the legs that look like Levi's. A crane. And look at the shadow of the balloon in front of us as the sun is behind us. So now we're getting ready to land. After we've been up for about an hour, we went up to about a thousand feet, and he's saying, brace, 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 we could have a rough landing, and this, this landing is hysterical. This is called an exciting landing. <laughs> the Japanese couple behind us, they are so cute and so funny. They're very proper and they're going to get turned on their side and they're going to have to crawl out of this basket. It's so undignified and it is so funny. So see how the basket now is laying on its side. It's like a bunch of kids. <laughs> And then all the vehicles come up. Now we just landed right where a lion is too. We don't know that, but Sanjay spots the lion right as we get out of the basket. We're just like a bunch of kids. Now this is the funny part. We start getting out. Look at this poor couple down below. <laughs> I, I seriously think he's like the president of Mitsubishi. <laughs> Crawling on his hands and knees and his wife. Sandy <laughs> 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 oh. so did such a great job. We had so much fun. So a lion is just behind the vehicle in the grass. Great job, Sanjay. Fantastic, isn't it? You rock, man. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah. There's a lion right there where we landed. You can see the outline right there. It's great in Africa. And this was this was just... I looked at that article and it was just the beginning of balloons in, 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 in all over the world, actually. And I just thought, oh, this is something I have to do. And slowly, you know, I walked my way through it. I got my engineering degree. I did my master's. In robotics. In robotics. Uh, designed petroleum refineries in the Netherlands. I became a consultant for Deloitte Touche. And I started my own IT company in the Netherlands and Germany. And in um, 2006, I decided I've had enough of uh, corporate life. I made a bit of money, I guess and I just chucked it all up 
and you're out. And now you're out in the in Masa Mara, in Mara. ballooning and having fun and putting smiles yes. on people's faces. <laughs> so beautiful. Up this, up the bubbles, so folks. the vehicles take us over to where they've prepared breakfast for us out in the middle of the bush. Champagne, orange juice. The bush green tent that you see on your right, that's the ladies' look. The truck is a gents. It's on the other side. Not on this side, not on this side showing off, on the other side. <laughs> yes, such a great sense of humor. Picnic. <laughs> if you want anything, please grab yourself. Ask now the breakfast is First class. For a skinny latte. Push bucks, they'll give you something else. Push bucks right over here. Yeah. Frappuccino, no frappuccino. <laughs> that, it means completely different Swahili. <laughs> uh, also, we'll have very good uh, pancakes being made in a couple of seconds. Literally one of the best breakfasts I've These ever had. Burners from the, from the balloon. And Sanjay very creatively has taken the burners from the balloon and created a great ambiance here. And Sanjay makes a couple of closing remarks and tells us how high we went, about a thousand feet. And remember, Governor's Balloon Safari in Kenya. All your friends, how good it was. Please come back to Governor's Balloon Safari. I think we are the best. We have the best. But best of all is Sanjay. He was a great leader, did a fantastic job, and if you ever go to Africa, you've got to do this. We'll see you next week on The American Innovator. Remember, life's an adventure. Be a part of the solution. Go out, learn, improve, change, think outside the box. We can change the way the world thinks. Be an innovator. I really gotta stop getting myself in these situations. That's a leopard, and that's an elephant. Yes, and this is a cheetah. Oh, I saw that. Oh, cute. Uh oh, uh oh. You got it.